Ever since I made that comparison video between Brave and Firefox, I have actually been using Brave as my primary browser. Firefox has been great for the most part, but recently Firefox Chan and I have had a few issues and we are taking some time apart. And to my surprise, Brave was a surprisingly easy transition. So I guess after a few weeks of usage, this is my review of the Brave browser. Now I recently tried another browser called Vivaldi, right? It's a weird name, but it's a pretty great browser. I use it as my secondary browser now. If you haven't seen that video, you can check it out. But there are a few key reasons why Brave is a better choice for me as a primary browser because of the things that I do online. Now look, Firefox is pretty great for the most part, but it isn't as robust as something like Brave. Since Chromium is already pretty good, Brave didn't have to do a lot to make it a good browser. There were some times where even in the latest version of Firefox, I got this message saying that this browser is not supported, download the latest Firefox or Chrome, even though I was literally on the latest version. And forget about Google specific sites like Google Meet. Okay, I understand it's Google's property, so it'll only open on Chrome and Chromium browsers. But what about some other sites like SharePoint? It's one of the most common sites that people use for work, but it doesn't seem to load on Firefox all the time. Sometimes it does, but other times it gives you this blatant network error. Now I'm sure that Firefox will fix it with a software update or something, but as I said, I've been using it for the past several years and I keep coming across such issues a few times a week. Now all these trade-offs would be worth it if Firefox was like the absolute best most secure browser out there, but even that is questionable. But Brave doesn't do any of that, it legit doesn't send anything back to its home servers and any data that you have doesn't leave the browser. It has several ad blockers and privacy features of its own, but since it is based on Chromium, you can even download some additional extensions like Privacy Badger. So if you know what you're doing, you can go the extra mile and block even more trackers like Google Ad Tracker. Since the founders of Brave are heavily influenced by crypto, they have their own token called the Basic Attention Token or BAT. You can earn it for free while browsing the web using Brave. All you have to do is enable Brave Rewards. The browser has a built-in crypto wallet where you can save the BAT and it even allows you to integrate other wallets that you may be using, like I use Metamask so I can use all of them in one single page. To earn BAT for free, all you have to do is enable Brave Rewards and you'll be shown a few notifications which are Brave approved ads. Those are ads for companies that are in line with Brave's vision, so they'll usually be in the crypto realm. These notifications are pretty non-intrusive and they usually don't disturb you, and oftentimes you learn something new from that. In a world filled with marketing garbage, if you get to learn something from an ad, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? So Brave, in my opinion, is hands down the best browser if you do anything related to buying, selling or storing crypto online. In terms of memory usage, I didn't find anything particularly impressive. I mean, it has a lot of services running in the background. So yeah, I mean, it's gonna be on par with every other browser out there. Maybe a little bit less than Chrome. Like Google Chrome is pretty much a bottomless pit. It'll eat up any amount of RAM that you throw at it. But while the RAM usage on Brave is also pretty high, I didn't notice anything that's majorly blocking me from using other apps. Maybe because I do all of my activities on a browser itself, that's no problem for me. So bottom line, if you're a Google Chrome user, just shut up and jump to Brave. I mean, what do you have to lose? It'll be exactly like Google Chrome. You can import all of your bookmarks and everything with one click and your usage data will not be sold in the market. My biggest concern when switching from Firefox was that how will I bring all of my passwords and secure data from there to here? I mean, I know I can import my bookmarks, but I didn't know I could import my autofill details, including the passwords with the same click. So I said import password, yes. Oh, done. That was easy. If you're thinking Google Chrome is good enough, why do I need anything else that's based on Chromium? Let me just tell you this. Google Chrome tracks your usage activity even when you're in incognito mode. Should I say anything more? Not only does it block trackers and doesn't share your user data outside of the browser, it also gives you extra features like a built-in crypto wallet. Oh, and by the way, those crypto projects that you saw where MetaMask wallet was popping up on screen, I'm actually testing a few things out so I can recommend it to you. So yeah, expect a video on that soon. I spent like my entire month YouTube revenue into that project to see if it works out, you know. I'm just trying new things so I can recommend better stuff to you. So if you appreciate that, then consider subscribing. You're not missing out on anything at all. You'll be getting all of the Chromium features alongside all the privacy benefits too. But if you're a Firefox loyal fan like me, then it can be a little more difficult. If you're just gonna be doing general browsing, then I guess Firefox would be okay. But as I said, many of the services that I need to use on a daily basis wouldn't work reliably there. I switched out of necessity, but now I'm having fun. So I guess I'm taking some space from Firefox. Don't, don't look at me like that. I, I can't. I, I can't. Now I'm also pretty happy with Vivaldi browser. I used it for a few days. 
but unfortunately it's a little slow like the tabs opening and the, the loading speeds for some reason aren't as fast as brave i mean i guess brave browser is trying to combat google chrome with their you know google meet project but I mean Brave is based on Chromium so you can still use Google Meet on this thing without any issues. That was one of the downsides of Firefox that Google Meet would not open on Firefox. So I won't recommend you try Brave Talks even though they are offering 30 days free trial. I mean I'm not sure what's the advantage here. Let me know if you want to see a full review of this. Since I do mostly crypto related things nowadays I'll be using Brave.